network security and penetration testing and today we are going to start chapter number five which is talking about TCP IP vulnerabilities now TCP IP plays an important role we know that there are uh, four layers of uh, TCP um, IP and there are seven layers of OSI model okay so uh, let's try to see the objectives of this one first objective is give a definition of TCP IP know the steps of TCP IP communication recognize the weakness in TCP IP and identify the steps in protecting the information from vulnerabilities in TCP IP now you know that there are three ways we talked about SYN, SYNAC and ACK like communication a message is going for synchronization it's acknowledging it and then it acknowledges back that okay I am responding to that now they play around with that to have denial of service attacks and uh, if uh, they use multiple computers on a network in order to launch a big attack or uh, denial of service attack we call it distributed denial of service attack which is possible because of the weaknesses which are there in this three way handshake. Now TCP IP vulnerabilities, transmission control protocol, internet protocol, suits of suite of pro, uh, protocols that underline the internet comprises many protocols and applications, common language of network computers makes transferring information fast and efficient and IP has tools to correctly route the packets because if a packet is going after the first or second hop it would lose the information of the destination so you'll have to attach an IP address to that packet so that it travels and it reaches the right computer on the internet now TCP is responsible for safe and reliable data transfer between host computers now keep in mind over here that we'll be talking about two kind of protocols which is TCP IP or there is uh, or we can call it a TCP protocol or we have UDP the difference between transmission control protocol is TCP is responsible for safe and reliable data so it makes sure that your data is being delivered in its true format or in a proper sequence as it was intended to route on the network now how it does it that first of all in order to send any packets TCP establishes a connection with the remote computer like SYN, SYNAC and then SYN okay we are talking then the traffic goes and it goes in a sequence that if I am sending a message ABC it should be received as ABC at the other end it's not like if it's routing at different routers and things it would be received at CBA it does not make any sense so it should leave and reach the destination in the true format at it as it's intended to in case if there is a change in communication or anything it would resend the packets back to the sender because it was either damaged or it's not reaching it in its true format so it makes sure that the data which is traveling on the network reaches the destination in exactly the format as you sent it so reliability is there it's checking it it's making sure that it is reaching there in a true format UDP is an endless connection for example if you want to send the packets it would keep on sending regardless if the destination address is receiving it or not so there is no reliability it's just sending the traffic then the question arises that why do we need a UDP connection if it's not reliable why are we caring about it first of all we'll talk about that there is um, uh, there are different forms in a TCP IP layer and the way it attaches is the header and a trailer on it we'll have to understand that whenever we attach a header or a trailer to a packet it increases the size of the packet the size of a TCP header and footer is huge as compared to UDP that's about the size of the traffic which would be traveling second thing is we use it for the communication which is not that important but we need a fast speed 
comparatively the speed of a UDP is far more than TCP connection because there is no uh, reliability of the connection whether it's going in the uh, same direction or it's received or not or if it's reaching at the same point or not the main idea of a UDP is that it should reach the uh, reach the location anywhere by any means by taking any routes possible if C is arriving before B or A is arriving before C it does not care we use it usually in gaming for example or streaming where we need to transfer packets in a very fast speed so that there is no delay in the communications so that's why they are saying that TCP is responsible for safe and reliable data okay next is illegitimate users take advantage of TCP IP vulnerabilities as I told you there is there are vulnerabilities in this three hand way handshake by exploiting the three-way handshake which is what three-way handshake is sin sin act and then act any yeah, communication making sure that there is a communication between them now unauthorized users may launch a denial of service attack on the destination computer floods the network with so many additional requests that regular traffic is slowed or completely interrupted or unreadable because it would be dividing the packets in a way that they'll never be read by the other party now here we have TCP IP layers like we have four layers here and seven layers on OSI model now you can see that they are not matching to each other on OSI model which is open international standards and then TCP IP was built by um, the set of uh, internet uh, engineering task force uh, they came up with the idea of TCP IP layers but you can see that there are seven layers and there are only four layers on this one and that's how the packet travels for example if a packet comes in at a physical layer it moves to the data link layer so when it travels to a data link layer the packet is attached to it in a sequence that it went from the physical layer to data layer data layer to network layer network layer to transport layer it would keep on adding the header to the packet which started from the top which is a physical layer till it reaches the presentation layer where the difference would be that there would be a header and there would be a trailer to it including all the relevant information of the IP address and everything and once it reaches the other computer it would go in a opposite sequence we'll be covering the topic in data encapsulation so it would go in a sequence starting from the physical layer going to data link layer and then presentation layer and it goes in the opposite sequence so that it's assembled in the right way and the information is being read over there so that's the main concept of data en encapsulation enclosing higher level of protocol information in lower lo level of protocol information we call it layer one layer two layer three layer four it would keep on adding its own header to it till it reaches the seventh layer it's also called data hiding implementation details of a class are hidden from the user now that's how it's doing it in which model this model is a TCP IP model right because it has four layers it's going from an application layer to transport layer on transport layer we attach a packet then it moves to the other level where we'll put it into a packet again and then finally it reaches and we have a data frame a complete data frame with the, uh, it would have the IP address MAC address and all these other details related to the destination computer and it would be right over there now internet protocol transmit data from the source to the final destination network protocol operates at the layer 3 of an OSI model and layer 2 of 3 of the TCP model IP is the connection less no guarantee of the delivery packets to the destination and IP routes the packets over the network hardware which is your MAC address or the IP address of the computer 
Now, IP address is IPv4. As we know, it's a 32-bit connection since uh, it was devised long time ago. And uh, they were expecting that there were around about 41 or 40 million IP addresses which would be there on a 32-bit uh, IP sequence. Now, as you know that uh, there are lots of devices which are coming, as they were saying approximately in the beginning of 2011, it would be exhausted. But since we have new devices on the internet, everyone has an IP address like before we had computers only. Then we had laptops, then we had appliances, servers, smartwatches, IP cameras, uh, tablets, you name it, internet of things, internet of everything. Each and every device is now acquiring or wants an IP address. So this thing wasn't working that we'll be able to satisfy everyone having the IP address for uh, devices, especially for internet of anything or internet of things. The devices which are connected to the internet, of course, each device would have a unique IP address, right? You can only reach it by the unique IP address. But since IPv4 wasn't satisfying it, now we have IP version 6, which is 128-bit assigned to hexadecimal, and you have eight different segments of it having four uh, uh, characters of it in it, digits, approximately at the beginning of 11. IP packets often arrive out in a sequence, vulnerability that attackers can exploit. When a large number of IP packets are sent over to the network, it's broken down called fragmentation. And that's where the problem starts. That they'll keep on fragmenting the data in a way that it won't be readable by the other side or the destination computer who is trying to reach that. Now TCP uses a connection-oriented design which is like first a connection is established, then it would start sending the packets. Connection is called a three-way handshake, which is a SYN, SYNAC, and then ACK. ACK is acknowledgement of the packet, which was synchronized initially. Provides a connection-oriented services between a source and destination computer, and guarantees the delivery of packets. Make sure that the item has been delivered over there. Packet reach the application layer in the right order. TCP identifies and assembles the packets based on the sequence numbers. If there is a change in the sequence, the packet would be lost and it would be requested from the sender. So he'll receive a packet again so that it arrives again in a proper format. Now connection and setup release, three-way handshake sets up and release the connection. There are some important flags which we must understand. TCP flags are URG for urgent, ACK for acknowledgement, PSH for push, RST for reset, and SYN is for synchronization, and FIN is for finish or end the communication. So it means exactly the same as the word is URG is urgent, ACK is acknowledging it, pushing is to forcing it to process it as soon as possible, Reset is to reset the connection or to end the connection. SYN is a synchronization and FIN is finishing. So if you want to finish a connection, what would you do after that? You'll terminate the connection, right? So we'll use a reset command for that after that so that the connection is finished. Packets can have more than one flag sets. Normally, for example, a packet will have only one flag except with SYNAC or FINAC, like finish and acknowledgement. Uh, three packets in TCP connection are SYN, SYNAC, and ACK, as we covered it in our sniffers lecture as well. Now, connection setup source uh, computer drives a SYN packet to the destination computer. We know when it's trying to communicate with the other computer, the first communication would be a SYN, which is a synchronization. Packet has the initial sequence number, which is ISN, we call it, because they will be assembled based on the sequence numbers of the packets. Now, ISN is indicated whether the SYN is a bit, is set, and receiving the computer transmits the SYN with an acknowledgement that, okay, I received it, now you acknowledge it, and the source computer sends an ACK message to the computer in response that, yes, I'm responding, and there is a connection. Source computer sends an ACK destination computer response within a range of sequence. Now, 
Next is uh, source computer find a fin packet to the destination computer. Fin is it's sending the connection now. Destination computer then sends a fin act that okay you want to send uh, you want to finish the connection. I acknowledge that. The packet source computer sends an act packet like as an acknowledgement, and either the computer should send a reset and close the session immediately. As I told you that after fin there is a reset which is closing the connection so we'll stop it over here and uh, we'll cover rest of the chapter in our next presentation